Hi, hello, one I come and welcome back to yet another episode on your and everyone's favorite uh, YouTube channel, the Little Sla YouTube channel. So today in this video, we're going to see about how to do a basic and end to end web socket performance testing. And uh, this has been uh, a request for me for a long, long time. So I just wanted to uh, demo this to you. And this is going to be very, um, uh, I mean, it's going to complete every entire topic. So first, let's start with uh, what are web sockets, and then we'll see uh, why web socket is required and what what I mean, how does it work, and uh, yes, uh, with a few real time examples, and then we'll see why we have to test the web sockets and much more. And then finally, I'll show you how to uh, do a testing with a web socket using JMeter. So firstly, um, let's see what is a web socket. So there are, I mean, like we know the traditional HTTP, right? the HTTP, uh, hypertext transfer protocol. In traditional, those HTTP communication, I mean, um, the client, so where we normally initiate a request from the browser. So the same way JMeter initiates a request and the server responds back. Done. So end of conversation. So all we do is send the request to the server. The server processes it and then sends the response back to us. So it's completed. So this is known as a request response communication. But what if you need a real time communication? So think of applications like chat ops, uh, stock price, uh, multiplayer games, live notifications. All these require bi directional real time communication between the client and the server. So that's where the WebSocket comes in. So WebSockets, uh, in other words, I would say they are, they are the real time superpower because WebSocket is a protocol where it starts as an HTTP request. Yes, it starts as an HTTP request. Then they upgrade themselves to a WebSocket communication. So you will see a response code of 101. You don't see 200 because the 200 response code is for HTTP. But when you upgrade your HTTP request to WebSocket, it you will see a response code of 101. So after that, it stays open and it allows full duplex communication with both the client and server can send data any time. So which is one connection, which is continuous messaging both ways. So how does it work? How does um, the WebSocket work? So, so the client, so we actually send a request to the server with a header, like for example, upgrade WebSocket. So the server replies with HTTP 1.1.101 switching protocols. That's it. The connection is upgraded and now both parties can send or receive messages anytime. So let me give you a real example. Let's say uh, we, I'm, I'm, I'm sending a message to the system like hello. The server instantly respond back to me as hello. Or take for example, you are in a stock uh, application, stock purchase application. The server responds. The server pushes a value for, for example, the value of a particular stock. Say for example, Tesla could be like $100 or $500, right, without any request from the client. So that's the real-time magic behind the WebSocket. So now let's see why we have to test WebSockets. Okay, so we all know that they are real-time. Uh, they push the data very quickly. That's fine. But why should we, uh, why do we need to test the WebSocket? So when you're testing modern applications, especially front-end SPAs or like microservices, WebSockets are very, very common. With tools like JMeter, we can simulate WebSocket clients and the next thing is the test server responsiveness. That's very important. And we do check real time message integrity. And then we measure the latency and load behavior. So just to, just to give you a quick recap before we start the actual JMeter testing using WebSocket. Uh, when it comes to HTTP, we communicate as request response. But when it comes to a WebSocket, it's a bi-directional. And when it comes to connection, the HTTP are short-lived the WebSocket is persistent. So until it gets closed, the WebSockets stay open. And then the use cases, we all know websites, APIs are the common HTTP use cases. And chats, games, live feeds are examples for WebSockets. And then when it comes to performance, we do have more overhead when it comes to HTTP performance. But when it comes to WebSocket, we do have a low latency and it is real time. So when I say low, low latency, which means the workaround time is very less. So that's that's the reason we, we do normally say it as low latency. So in a world that's moving fast and live, like chat up, chat up, like say for example, the web, the WhatsApp, the Instagram chat, the DMs, right? Live sports, live sports and their scores are like gaming. So WebSockets are the protocol that is actually powering up the live stream of data. And today we're going to test it using JMeter. 
So now before we move on, let me just quickly show you a sample application. This is running on uh, Docker. So I'm running a WebSocket application through Docker. So before uh, we test it via JMeter, let me quickly show you uh, how does this works. I mean, this WebSocket code works. So here, if I run this command, you could see the echo uh, WebSocket that even sponsored by lob.com. So this is the response that we uh, expect it to be uh, responded back using our JMeter. So for that, uh, what are the elements that we need? What are the components that we need uh, to run the JMeter test? So before uh, we even um, add any uh, items, any uh, components, we need to install the WebSocket. So you need to install the Peter Dune Bosch. Uh, and also if, if in case if you want to try more, you can actually install the Macy Zaleski's WebSocket as well. But in our case, I'm going to use the Peter Dune Bosch uh, plugin manager and the WebSocket one. And right click on the test plan, going to add, threads and I'm adding a thread group under the third group I'm adding the sampler so this sampler is going to be a web socket sampler so once I choose it now let's make some changes so the server name or IP so in our case um, I'm going to use okay in our case okay this is going to be the uh, URL uh, which I'm going to use so the echo.websocket.events so same in your case you must find what is going to be web, uh, the web server or the IP and the port number is going to be 443 because this is going to be a HTTPS. So this is going to reach out to the external world. And you, we all know um, what happens is initially we have HTTP uh, code, uh, HTTP request, so that will upgrade itself to a web socket, right? So that's what I have explained to you before I even start. So how does a uh, web socket works, right? So it starts as a HTTP server where it sends a request, but by the time when it sends a request, it upgrades itself to a web socket, right? And then the implementation is going to be the same thing. And then the protocol, I'm going to change it to WSS. So this is the protocol which we need to use to send a web socket request. And then for the path, I'm not using anything for now. I'm just going to ignore it. And I'm not going to add any ignored SSL certificate errors or any streaming connections. And now the request data. So what I'm going to send to the web socket. So I'm going to send hello from JMeter WebSocket client and then the WebSocket will respond back to me, right? So this is the expectation. And uh, let me save this and, okay. Let me save this real quick. C drive, my name here and then bin, WebSocket, WebSocket demo dot jmx. I'm saving it and then let me add a listener right so to view the results tree so i'm adding a view results tree listener so that we can uh, see the results and let me quickly run this here yep the socket sampler the response code is here wow that's really great so here you can see uh, we have opened a new connection and using a response message pattern, so using disconnect pattern, waiting for the server connection for 500 milliseconds, the WebSocket connection has been opened, the connection has been established, the received frame matched response pattern, the received message, so it's waiting for message for 2000, 20,000 milliseconds, the WebSocket connection has been successfully closed by the server, so once I have completed my connection, my results has been successfully um, published, so my WebSocket connection will get closed automatically. So let's go to the request. So here we can see the hello from JMeter WebSocket client. And in the response data, we could see the echo.websocket events sponsored by lob.com. So this is a frame one and this is the message two. So this is what our expectation is. So we have, we could see the request has been sent properly and then the response data at the end. And then the sampler results, we could see a 200 response code, which tells us that the message has been successfully sent back, right? So just to let you know, okay, there is one more thing. Now, what I'll do is let me add a, uh, another listener, the aggregate graph. And meanwhile, let me add, uh, let me add a parent to it. So what I'll do is let me add a logic controller, a simple if controller, uh, sorry, a simple uh, transaction controller. Where is that? Yep, here. I'm adding the transaction controller here and inside that let me bring it 
bring this one here i'm going to generate the parent sample and the third group is going to be like like for example let me run it like for 10 users and it's going to be like for 10 iterations but now i'm going to add a think time to the children and this think time is going to be like for example 10 seconds right so i'm actually properly setting up a test because you just want to understand how does the aggregate graph work so let me disable the view results tree and let's quickly run this so going to go into the aggregate graph so shortly you will be able to see the results for the request that we are sending so the transaction controller yep the transaction controller has started so so far we have got 10 samples and the average response time okay let's bring the minimum to the front average and then the maximum so we've got 267 minimum response times 279 average 333 as the maximum response time so that's how it works with with equal with proper interval so here you could see that is a very less latency there's a very low level latency and the responses are real real quick so that's how we I have to create a web socket request so let me just quickly reiterate so you have to enter the server name or the IP the proper port number the implementation type here the protocol so in our case it's going to be WSS so you can either try with WS and if it doesn't work you can try with WSS and then the content encoding so it's going to be a TF8 so that's the content the encoding uh, format in case if you have any path and any, any additional path after your server name you can very well use it here and then the request data uh, send uh, what is your business request that you have to send so you have you can add that message in the request data part and then you can send it to the user and uh, yep message backlog I'm adding it as three the response pattern in case if you want to choose any response pattern you can choose it very well and finally you will be able to see your results are here yep it's going very well and we are able to successfully do a web socket testing so that's why I mentioned it previously it is going to be a end to and web socket testing so we, i have showed you how does it works in real time a web socket how does it respond back for me in real time and then i have demoed it i have I've created a i've added the plugins for this so the plugin which is created by who is that guy sorry um let me quickly go there yeah by peter just remember peter so i have downloaded that i have added the plugin and then i have added a websocket sampler and then a thing time added to it and then finally it's a regular way where i have added the thread groups i've given the user thread and then the numbers so in case if you want this jmx file please do comment in the comment section and if you like this video please do comment that in the comment section give a thumbs up to this video and if you really find this useful please do share it with your friends who are really struggling with the websocket uh, geometry testing so with that i come to an end of this video so until i see you all in the next video it's bye bye from us and your favorite little slide youtube channel take care and bye bye